crazy intro you've just watched was shot by a London-based film production company called Continuum Films. And the guy within the video is Otis. And Otis has built the craziest first time build I've ever seen. He's built a sleek looking, super powerful flat tracker out of a Super Duke. I had the chance to ask Otis a bit about himself, how he got into bike building and about this specific bike because guess what most people have told him. Otis also shared a few super valuable tips for first time builders. Enjoy. So that's your first bike, right? Yes, sir. Sick. Thank because you. I guess like the first build is kind of the most tricky one. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always a learning curve, yeah. but ultimately it's a good way to kind of find the things you don't like as much as the things you do like, yeah. the hardest parts, and it gives you, a, I think, a respect for how long things take as well. What was the hardest part for you on this bit? So, getting everything to fit geometrically was quite difficult. Yeah. I started with a relatively difficult base to yeah. build a flat track out of, so I had to make a lot of adjustments. So uh, that's from the Duke? This is a Super Duke, super Duke? Yeah. yeah, so it's 1000cc B-Twin just shy of, but built for road bike racing. Yeah. And then I had to extend it a little bit, change the geometry just a bit, and then completely change where everything lives. So the fuel tank is now at the back rather than at the front. Uh, I made my own inlet planet, so we take the inlet down a little bit, yeah. which gives me space for a battery, all the electronics, yeah. fuel pump, fuel pressure so regulator. Everything electronic wise in the front? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So I built a, a, a hanger bracket at the front, so we have the battery in there, ECU. Yeah. Uh, it retains all of the original electronics that I've modified, so we still have all of the fuses, all of the relays, yeah. um, all of the original parts needed to uh, to run the bike on the road as well. So it is how, a road bike. How did you start building bikes? Like, if that is your first bike, how did you decide to go for something like this? So this is the kind of design I've had in my head for like 10 years. Yeah. And I've never really had the time and the resources to actually do it. So yeah. it kind of just bit, bit the bullet in the second wave of COVID. Yeah. Hence the name second wave. <laughs> And just kind of thought, screw it, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Um, and it was kind of one thing at a time, so it took a long time. Because I didn't know whether or not I could proceed to the next step until I knew one part was going to fit. Yeah. Example being, I didn't know if I was able to actually get 19-inch wheels to fit in this bike. Yeah. So I had to spend uh, you know, a long time waiting so I could go to the next step. Same yeah. with the exhaust, I didn't know if I could get the exhaust to work. <laughs> then I didn't know if I could design bodywork. That, yeah. that would work. So it took a long time. Do you have any background in like engineering or? I, I am an engineer ah, uh, right. by trade. Yeah, but at yeah. the same time, uh, a lot of the skills I learned for this has come just from you know having a passion for it and finding my own way around yeah. it. Yeah, and, and the help of others as well. Yeah, it's the single most significant part is is being humble and and, and asking for help from others. Yeah, and. Be, the, you know, the bike community is such a wonderful place that everyone is willing to help each other. Yeah. That's the thing. So, you know, I, 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 before I did this, I realized I'd, I've never welded before. So this is a big learning curve on, 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 on fabrication as well. And the did people that helped me. Did you take weld or make weld for, like, did you use both? There's actually both between the exhaust and between the fuel tank itself. Yeah. So there's a mixture. So then, you fit the exhaust yourself as well? So I designed the exhaust and then it was built by a guy called Jeff Cobalt, who's, in my opinion, one of the coolest guys and the best exhaust builder yeah. that I've ever met in my entire life. That's um, so cool. What he was able to do is retain the original uh, header pipes. Yeah. So the material that was used was very minimal, but then he was able to get you know, exactly the style that I designed the lines and retain that. I retain a lot of functionality as well, so yeah. it's completely serviceable. There's nothing that is kind of significantly obscure, like fitted there, that you can't yeah. really take off. How did you build the fairing? Though? So I started fiber with, uh, yeah, so there, yeah. There, there were two plastic parts. I started with uh, a traditional rear flat track seat that yeah. I managed to mount onto the fuel tank. And then I, I bought a fiberglass tank cover yeah. that looked like a, uh, kind of resembled a fuel tank and cut it in half and widened it and got all oh, the angles okay. right and got it fitted right. And then I uh, went to a guy called uh, Max Vanoni, who's here today, yeah. and he fused them together, and he actually built me a mold, uh, so out of a single piece. And That's then we find cool. ways to mount it, yeah. so it's on quick-release mounts, um, and they're rubber-mounted as well, so they have vibration mounts. And so we have a plug and a mold, so I can build as many of these as I want, which is really cool. That, so if I raise really it, nice. drop it, and yeah. break it, I don't have to Do you raise it. flat track? Uh, not yet, not <laughs> but yet, this but is the <laughs> intention. <laughs> yeah. This is the intention, is to, is to give it a go, and so yeah, it's, it's a cool kind of thrown into the deep end <laughs> <laughs> with a thousand cc hooligan oh, bike. Really, that is it runs beautifully. Right, yeah. it sounds incredible. Yeah, I it's, wish they had like a best revving bike contest or something like that. Yeah, it's, 
insanely powerful bike, um, but the geometry, I think I got just right. So yeah. How long did it take you to build this? So you started in the second wave of COVID? Yeah, hence the name, second wave. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of been on and off, you know, since yeah the second wave of COVID really. Yeah. So about, about a year and a half, I think, from start to finish. Not but a lot of that is waiting, you know, yeah. so uh, it took me kind of, say, four months to get the hub design for the wheels and then build, have the wheels built uh, in Finland. Yeah. And I waited three months, you know, before I had a rolling chassis and then another three months before I had a finished exhaust and then another six months before I had yeah. the bodywork finished. And it just takes time. And you weren't able to, like, progress in the time you were waiting. Correct. Yeah. It's kind of wait for one thing. Yeah. And know then that see it fits. how the rest fits. Exactly. Yeah. But luckily, the good part is, is now I've retained a lot of that information, all of the designs that if push came to shove, could build another one in six weeks. I haven't used much CAD and I've done a lot of this by hand. Yeah. So a, lot of, a lot of hand calculations, hand designs, oh, and a lot okay. of 2D designs. But this is the problem with taking a bike that hasn't really been built before, yeah. um, particularly into a style of bike that hasn't been done before. So you are struck for scratch. There's nowhere to kind of ask. There's nowhere to look. Yeah. You kind of have to make it Both yourself. You can get. Yeah, like you don't that. know if it's going to fit. Yeah. So, yeah. And do you like 3D print or something like that? Any prototypes? Or? So a couple of brackets that I've used underneath yeah. here. Um, I can't take it off, unfortunately, yeah. I don't have any tools, but a couple of brackets for things like the fuel pump and for relays. Uh, I've 3D printed a little bit, but not much. Yeah. Mainly, it's just a case of taking a piece of aluminium, bending it, drilling yeah. it, yeah. seeing if it fits. Oh, it fits, perfect, <laughs> that'll do. Do you have any special tools for working with aluminium? Um, not really, no. So the only kind of, I would say, specialist tools really are would, the, the tools that Jeff would have been used to roll the pipe for the exhaust, yeah. um, which I haven't, you know, I've never built an exhaust myself. So it's, it, like I said, when you're asking for help, it's, it's essentially a lot easier just to kind of use the expertise of other people. What, which, like, color did you use? Like, so is this is Cerakote. Cerakote? Uh, yeah, so Cerakote Van Bronze, which... Um, did you do it yourself as well? No, I used a, a company called Coast Racing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I did the rear shock as well, if you look on the other side. Nice little Easter egg on this bike. Yeah. It's tucked away, but it completely changes the style of the rear shock. Yeah. So yeah, it's, a, it's I, interesting how you took the Super Duke engine and yeah. built a completely different bike out of it. Yeah, well, a lot of people told me not to do this in the beginning. <laughs> Why? Um, it's designed for the road, it's not designed for off-road racing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a heavy lump, but it's very, very fast engine as well. It's got a lot of torque. But so far, it's absolutely perfect. I've geared it. Um, I get it down on the front and up at the rear, so it's, it's, it's a little bit nicer. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'll ever get it out of second gear on a flat track. <laughs> um, if I ride it on the road, I don't think I'll ever get more than five miles of range out yeah. of it <laughs> because they're a very thirsty bike. <laughs> and I put yeah, bigger injectors in it and uh, yeah, a shorter plenum yeah. The, yeah, that I built myself. Um, did an engine rebuild or top end. And, well, that's yeah. cool. You said you had this for like 10 years in your head, like the design. Kind of, yeah. So How like, did you start? Like, how did it come that you have a bike design and you had like this? It's like so being around bikes and I, I worked a little bit in the bike industry as well when I was younger, like when I was kind of first finding my feet and finding out what I wanted to do. And I always really liked the style of flat trackers, particularly yeah. how they managed to retain a lot of the style from the 70s. Yeah. You know, in the 60s and 70s on some of the, you know, the original Harley XR 750s. And uh, they're quite different as well. You know, and uh, I always thought that was uh, kind of a good process, but I like how narrow they are, but I also love that swept back look. Yeah. They're quite minimalistic, and I've always liked the, the shotgun style side pipes. Yeah. So these kind of always stuck in my head, and then, um, you know, kind of being exposed to KTMs and realizing how cool they were as a bike, yeah. you know, and they were inherently different, kind of very, very, just generally quite different. And I, I remember seeing the, the Super Duke, the 1290, for the first yeah. time and thinking, wow, you know, what a cool engine. And they managed to package such a powerful bike into such a narrow, yeah. you know, and almost quite an agile bike as well. And I thought, hmm, you know, it, it, that would probably be a good base to do for a flat tracker one day. And then realizing, I can't afford one of those. Yeah. Can I afford a 990? No, but I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. And so I thought, okay, well, because I, it it's would have been too much money of an investment. Spend, right? Yeah, it is now. Like, yeah. But, <laughs> To have bought uh, a 1290 would have been a bit too much of a risk. However, now that I know it can be done, I might do it with a 1290. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you'll be back. <laughs> we'll uh, see what I, 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 I have no idea what to expect from this. It's yeah. got a good reaction so far today, but 
I'm sure it will get picked amazing. apart by critics as yeah. well. I'm feeling a little bit nervous about. But do people come up to you and say like, "I like this bike" or "I hate this bike"? Is it like quite honest feedback you get? Um, I'm open to as, as constructive yeah. and as honest as people would care to be because it's fantastic. But without sounding selfish, I built it for me, so I don't really care. Yeah, <laughs> it has to be. Yeah, it's your bike, like, and it isn't one. perfect. Yeah, I'm my own worst critic. It isn't yeah. perfect. I've got a few bits that really I'm not. 100% happy with and I will change these but ultimately time was an essence here and this is something I built course, in the evenings yeah. in my spare time yeah. so you know that's six. are you going to build more bikes in the future Did this without a doubt you? without a yeah. doubt yeah I mean I, I, I'm thinking about building an electric bike next I like to challenge convention there's nothing like a challenge and it's certainly more rewarding as well when you manage to succeed yeah. like with, you know as much as I have the utmost respect for every single bike build no matter how simple or complex it's it's I, I like you know like I said when I first started this I got told by a few people don't bother don't do it it's yeah. gonna take too long it's gonna be too difficult just start with something more simple yeah and I kind of like the if idea you had one tip for like a first-time builder what would it be be humble about timelines yeah. I thought this would take <laughs> me about three or four months it's taken me a year and a half yeah. Be humble about that. Don't rush. Yeah. Don't rush. Get it right. Yeah. Because it's far more rewarding when you get it right. But anything is possible as yeah. well. So let your imagin imagination run wild. But and don't be afraid to ask for help. There's one thing that a lot of people, including myself, when I was younger, kind of like, oh, I'll find a way of doing it myself. Ask for help. It's one of the best things you can do because it's how you learn. People enjoy, you know, sharing their knowledge with other yeah. people. So ask for help. If I hadn't have had the help from, for example. Uh, Jeff Cobert, who did the exhaust for me, yeah. Bob at the machine shop, who helped me, you know, fabricate the tank and helped me come up with the idea in the first place, and then Max Vanoni, who helped me with the bodywork. Yeah. I wouldn't have been able to do it at all. It would have taken me much longer. It would have cost me a lot more money, yeah. and the finish wouldn't have been as good. That's why I say always ask for help and go to the specialist. Get in touch to, with these people. You have to talk. You yeah. talk and you look, and you, if, you, if you're passionate about it, they will find them. They'll find their way to you. It's as simple as that. Yeah. But yeah, if, if I wanted to, I could have spent more money and yeah. made it absolutely perfect. Um, for example, I wanted to design uh, my own radiator and get rid of the radiator at the front. Still not something I'm completely happy with. Yeah. Um, but that would have cost me a lot more. Um, I wanted to design my own uh, yokes and have those CNC's. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been astronomically expensive. Yeah. And the next one, I will. Yeah. But this one, because I wasn't sure if it was going to work right up until the very end where it's all put together, it's, it, it, was, it was kind of like, yeah, and spread across you know a year and a half. It's yeah, it's a worthwhile investment. Yeah, it's a crazy bike. Thank you. Thanks for the interview. Nice to meet you, man. Thank you very much.